city of Tokyo and that across the street right there is Katela, Katela, which is the original curry pond. It says Ganso Curry Pond on the top of the sign there. And Kata, Katlea, <laughs> it's Katorea in Japanese, is the first place that curry pond or a spicy donut with curry inside was born inside of there. And we're going to be having one of those salutations. Hello, hi, A21. Welcome to Morishita. This area of Japan is very interesting. I did come here last year and I walked around the area because I found out later that this shop is closed on Sunday and Monday. Well, luckily for us, it's Wednesday, I believe, the 23rd of December, two days before Christmas Eve, uh, two days before Christmas Day. And I, I went across the street and I already bought some. So let's go and take a look at the sign. And I want to tell you about some of the history. And then we're going to try one of their, two of their curry pond. They actually have two of them. This is one of the bakeries in here. They're so busy. So I couldn't go inside and film because they have a policy of five people in at a time. Now this curry pond here, you can see that people are waiting outside because uh, only five people at a time can go inside. Ganso curry pond, katorea. Yeah. And the hours are actually for hot bread you want to come here between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m., which is right now, and then come back at 3 p.m. because they're not baking stuff. They don't need to. Now this, let's go around the side here. And I'll, I'll show you inside the window in a minute because after 11 o'clock, it gets kind of quiet around here. But this curry pond started in um, Showa 2, which I think was like the 1920s. Was it 19... 19 uh, it's like early 20th century, which is crazy. Now, Japanese curry in general came to Japan in the Meiji era. It's not quite sure exactly when, but um, British ships were coming into, into Yokohama's harbor. And those British ships had Indian cooks and, and Malaysian cooks, I believe. And the Indian cooks were cooking curry. And this is something that was really, really new to Japanese. They had never had curry rice before. They had the rice, but the curry? And it was so good. And, and the Meiji era was an era where Japan was shifting over to Western things that curry ended up becoming one of the staples of Japanese bakeries and Japanese food in general. Now, curry is added into these ponds. And this, this shop here, Katolea, was the first one to do it. Let's try one of their curry rices, uh, one of their um, curry donuts right here. So I bought a bag of them right here. Boom. Oven fresh. We're going to try the one that is uh, yakitate, which is uh, right out of the oven here. This is... Oh, let's get down here so the sun absorbs all that goodiness. It's, it's kind of still pretty warm here. It just came out of the oven. Um, this is a, I guess you would call it a curry donut. Um, fresh dough curry wrapped around with fresh dough and then deep fried. I guess they also put um, panko, which is breadcrumbs on there to give it a consistency. It looks crunchy on the outside, so soft and delicious on the inside. This one is their spicy one. So let's give this a try. I guess this would be considered street food because we're here on the street, right? <laughs> All right, come on in the corner here. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. Now, this curry here, it usually Japanese curry is, um, they put in roux, okay? So it can be quite, um, I don't know, sometimes it's too runny or sometimes it's too, um, well, let me just put it this way. This one is really jelly, like gel-ish, this curry, and that's perfect for a donut. You don't want it running all over your hands. So it is a different consistency, and it is a little bit spicy, but when Japanese say spicy, they're not really, they don't really say spicy, it really doesn't mean spicy. It means spicy to Japanese, it's not spicy to us, normals, people. Wow, that's a beautiful donut. 
There's a line out the door. This was not here before. There's a line out the door. Oh, I got lucky. Come on, you want to do it? Come on. Come, come on out back. I got one for you right here. Relax, relax. I know this might be your first time. This might be your first time. Yeah? Two dollars. Two dollars. Yeah? All right, good. All right, thanks, man. Here's the goods. That's right, I do deal in donuts. You want it? You want it? All right, good. Here, two dollars. Katorea. This one is sweet. I'm doing it because it's just kind of suspicious. I'm like in the street corner here in the alley. <laughs> this is a deal going on. Donut deal. How much? Two dollars. All right, I want it, man. Just be cool, just be cool. Gonzo curry palm. All right, let's, let's open her up here. At noon, I gotta go over to uh, we're doing a live stream with, uh, all right, here's the, here's the um, sweet one. Now this curry pond is uh, different than the other one. He said that, what's the difference? I asked him and he said, one is sweet and one is spicy. So we're gonna see if this is spicy or this is sweet. Here we go. Good morning. Now taking some back for Kanai, if there's a line, I gotta get back to do a live stream with the uh, um, leaflet, which is on Twitch. Hmm. It's very interesting. It's not, you know, I think they both have a little bit of spice in it, but I can't tell the difference between a spicy and, an, and a sweet one. This one might be slightly sweeter, but it's certainly not spicier. There is a nice crispness to it. So that panko that they put around it, that gives a good crunch to it, no matter if it's, uh, um, hot or not hot, there's still a good crunch to it because of the panko. And when it was deep fried, it got crunchy. So a really nice bite every time. Mmm. I think the spicy is spicier. I think the sweeter is sweet one is spicier than the spicy one. I think maybe they made a mistake and pointed me to the wrong one, which I doubt. But just when you go in there, and you're gonna go in there if you come to Japan, because this is, this is where Curry Pond was born, in this shop. If you go in there, you're gonna wanna get both of them. You gotta try both. You, gotta, you have to. I like this one. It's the small round one, and then they have one that's shaped more like an oval with, with points on the end. I guess it would be shaped like a lemon. So there's two different um, sizes of Curry Pond. Uh, Mr. Donuts also has curry pond, but this, this is so much far, this is far more superior than the uh, curry pond, the, the curry donuts at Mr. Donuts. Mr. Donuts does, they, they put so much more curry. Look at that. That is a very, very massive amount of curry inside of this donut. And this is why this place has a line out the door. All right. This cost me $4.50 for two of them. So it's about $2.25 each. But if you compare this with not only are they the originators, so they can charge this price, but if you compare this to the price of a, mist, of a Krispy Kreme donut, in Japan anyways, it's pretty much about the same. And this is far superior. Mm. Wow. Wow. Each bite is so good. Just one last look as I finish her off here. Nice. Jim, here's some crows. Mm. You wanna scare off the crows? You have to look scarier than them.
All right, let's just do a little walk by here. So you can see in here, they do have some Ampamans, which are really cute. Do you see that? And some Draimon, uh, Draimon. And in the, in the corner there, oh, they just brought some out. They just brought some out there. You can see it out in the middle there. Do you see it through the window? Oh, there's a guy there. There it is right there. Oh, his back's to us. There it is right there. You can see it through the window. Um, they also have a really delicious looking... There was down there... Oh, here's... There is the curry pun right there. There's only one left. There's only one left, and they're gonna get probably get rid of that one. But you can see there the chef. The chef is now making them, and there's a bunch of them, and they're going really, really fast. Look at that. There's a line at the door. So you have to come back here. Even on the top of the bakery inside there, it says Ganso Karepan. Right there. They serve other stuff too. They serve other stuff too, but also the sign here says that they're going to be closed during the holiday or they have a limited hours. So if you do come here, keep that in mind to Katorea. You can see in there. She's putting all the curry pan now into the, uh, into the bags in the back there. That is some serious, serious bakery goodies. The station that the station that you're gonna to want to know is right here. It's right next to the station. This is pretty cool. It's Morishita. It's, it's on the Oedo line, which is kind of like the Yamanote line, but it's the Toei subway line, um, the E line, I guess you call it, and the Shinjuku line, which is the kind of lime green one that's not the Yamanote line. It crosses between Shinjuku and Motoyawata across the city. This is exit A7, A7. And it's Morishita Station. And Morishita kind of means like the, the bottom part of the forest, but there's no forest here. And in World War II, this area got seriously bombed. So you're not gonna find a lot of old history around here which is kind of a, uh, a shame, but uh, it has a Showa feel. So it kind of still feels like the 1950s when you can walk around and you, there's some neighborhoods where you'll feel like you're in Ann Arbor, Michigan or something, which just reminds me of a 1950s town when I went to the university of, I can't say the name of it. It's something because I went to Ohio State. So there you have it. What do you think? Do you think that that this curry bread, if you come to Tokyo, is worth actually making a trip from your hotel in Shinjuku on the Shinjuku line to Morishita to have one of these donuts. Is this because in Japan, this is the stuff that people do. They travel for food. Do you see there? People are coming in and despite the pandemic, going in there and getting food at that bakery and taking out the trash. Maybe? Some people wrote in, maybe leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Sign off on your feelings. Is food worth it to travel? Absolutely. That's my answer. Um, they have also other items. You don't have to just go in there and get curry pond. They also had uh, Santa Claus pond, uh, Dr Draymond pond, um, Ampon man pond. <laughs> they did some characters in there. But they also have some really good items like yakisoba pan. Pan means uh, bread. It's, they took the European word in Japanese and they made it into, um, that's the bakery. So panya is bakery in Japanese. And Japanese bakeries are so good. They're really, really good. Um, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Uh, again, I wanna hear from you. Curry donuts are pretty good. I'm gonna see if I can do a story on this because I'm very curious about the history of the food that we eat. There's a story. Behind each item that each restaurant makes, there's a story as to why that chef picked that item and what makes this so good and so delicious that it is worth you taking your time to go and eat it. And why do people and customers keep coming back? Is it just because it's convenient and it's near their house? Or is there some magical thing inside of that food that makes them just really, really want to 
eat it all the time. For me, I could see myself coming back here and being a regular customer. Um, just make sure that you know it's not open on Sunday and Monday. All right, just point that out. Daniel, yep, I'd get some if I could go there. Daniel, you and me both, brother, because this, this place is pretty darn good. It's pretty darn good. Uh, Jesse Santiago's here, keep it up. And uh, the Hedge Monica, Monica. Thank you, Paul, J. Paul Cotery. Thank you, he's a new traveler. Natasha Zidanov. Thank you, big love from Pearman, Michael Sassano. Here's for a nice beverage to wash that down. Michael, I'm in a hurry to get back to my house for the leaflet interview. Jennifer French is in the house. Jennifer, I'm gonna use that to get some for Kanai to take back in a bag of donuts. She's gonna love it. 